student fury at housing letdown. Last stop for late night bus services. Bad economics. Taking to the skies, high flying new design course for Southampton students. And in sport, the bisons and the steel dogs battle it out. And welcome to Winchester News Online, I'm Hannah Keegan. A number of students arriving at Winchester University for the first time have been forced to live in cabins, being made to pay the same prices as those who are living in usual accommodation. Although negotiations are underway between housing and the student union, students still feel let down. Aldous Larkey investigates. The number of students at the University of Winchester has increased significantly since last year. The university was shortlisted for the 2010 Times Higher Education Awards and is, according to the Guardian University Guide, rated as in the top 25 universities for satisfaction with teaching in 2009. Because of the increase in demand, some students arrived to the University of Winchester to find out that they won't be staying in the accommodation expected. Due to the lack of accommodation, some students were placed in porta cabins where the facilities do not meet their expectations. I don't think it's fair we've like paid to have a sink. The door doesn't like shut properly unless you force it and it's the same if you're trying to close and open the door so it just so you have to kind of like force it and you feel like you're really going to break the door and like this is quite thin. It's like paper like paper mache what you would expect. It's like a five minute trek to get to the bathroom if I need to go to the bathroom as well. The university have said the university is actively dealing with issues raised by students living in the modular accommodation of West Downs 106 and 107. The university recognises that there are some disadvantages. As a result, the university are in negotiations with the student union about reducing the rent for residents in West Downs 106 and 107. Alders Larky reports, Winchester News Online. City council workers in Southampton are to strike over the latest pay cuts after the council announced there would be a 2 to 5.5% reduction in pay. We have Felicity Houston in the studio who can tell us more. Felicity. Thanks, Anna. Well, the latest is over 1,000 council workers will be striking tomorrow. Uh, they'll also be involved in quite a large rally in Guildhall Square in Southampton City Centre. Um, workers who are striking include bin men, social workers, therapists, care managers and business support staff in both adult social services and child social services. <laughs> Um, there is... <laughs> is there anyone else who's being affected by this at all? Um, well, obviously the bin men were striking last May for quite a while and they left the streets of Southampton in quite a mess. Yeah, the so council the won't council want another situation no, like that. So hopefully they're going to do something about it this time, but okay. who knows. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you very much. In other news, two bus routes are to be axed this month by the County Council to the anger of local residents who will be affected. The proposed plans are also intending to stop buses running late at night. Ali Al Jamri reports. Cuts to the bus services are expected to hit Winchester on the 30th of October. Hampshire County Council promises to bring in greater punctuality to some of its services, but at the cost of two closures. Routes 2 and 6A are to be discontinued, leaving commuters from Oliver's Battery, The Valley and Abbott's Barton less connected. Councillor Brian Collin is one of those opposing the bus cuts. And what my, my point is that a bus company should, should be forced to operate a whole route, not just the odd bus. That's called a taxi. They should have an obligation to provide the whole route. I, 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 would, I would want the bus to finish around about half past one. And uh, I think the absence of buses is a major constraint on the health of our, health of our evening and late, late evening economy. It's just bad economics. Meanwhile, Stagecoach had this to say. We very much regret having to cut back services, but I am sure that people will understand that the circumstances are beyond our control. Full details of the new timetables are available at the Stagecoach website. This has been Ali Al Jamri from Winchester News Online. Chaos was caused in Winchester when a van caught fire outside local council offices. 
The fire, believed to have been caused by a brake failure, was seen by a local resident. I heard some girls screaming up at the entrance to the multi-storey and they were screaming at the plumbers in the trenches. They said, your cabin's on fire. So one chap jumped out of the trench, opened the cabin door, grabbed his coat, but all the flames shot out all over and the lorry slid down and caught the sports car on fire. The use of unmanned vehicles is becoming increasingly important to scientists and emergency services across the world, which is why the University of Southampton has introduced a new course in designing them. Tom Morgan went to the university to hear about this new course exploring the technology. The University of Southampton has launched the first postgraduate course in drone design, with 12 students signing up at the start of the new term. The course teaches students how to build the machines, which are used for surveillance, scientific purposes and in a military environment. I think a drone really means an entirely unmanned vehicle. Generally drones, like any robot, will do the 3Ds, which is dull, dirty or dangerous work. So they're good at applications that involve any of those three things. An anti-war activist who wished to remain anonymous gave me her views. If you look at what drones are actually used for, they're, they're basically war craft, which are not manned at all and um, have been known to be used on civilian population. It's early days for the new design course, but not everybody is positive about how the technology will be used. This is Tom Morgan reporting from the University of Southampton for Winchester News Online. And now we go over to Sam with the sport. Sam, what have you got for us today? Thanks, Hannah. Now this week, Eastleigh turned their attentions to the FA Cup as they hosted Cinderford Town at the Silver Lake. Dale Gornall has more on this exciting affair. Eastleigh played Cinderford in the second qualifying round of the FA Cup on Saturday and it was the home team who started the brighter. The pressure finally paid off when a well-worked corner was headed back across goal for Eastleigh defender Tom Jordan. Jordan! And it's 1-0 to Eastleigh! Didn't take long for Eastleigh to double their lead. And Forbes rises highest! And it's 2-0 to the Spitfires! Cinderford were offered a lifeline shortly after with a penalty awarded for this challenge. However, it wasn't taken as EC's goalkeeper Gareth Barfoot pulled off a great double save to deny the visitors. Then, a moment of controversy. Jamie Slabber saw this effort ruled out for offside, even though there were Cinderford players marking the post. The decision proved to be meaningless though after Eastley sub Andrew White pulled away from the Cinderford defence. Fantastic save but White stabs home the rebound and Eastley are home and dry. Nick McCooty did offer Cinderford some hope however after a cleverly worked free kick paid off. But it wasn't to be after Cinderford captain Dale Evans got his second yellow card for this two-footed tackle. The game finished 3-1 with Eastley facing Oxford City at home in the next round. Dale Gornall, Winchester News Online. AFC Totten continued their impressive start to life in the Evo Sticks South Premier Division on Tuesday night with a routine 3-0 victory at home to lowly Cirencester. The Stags rode their luck at times and the scoreline was perhaps a little harsh on the away side. Top scorer Mike Gosney scored the pick of the goals as Totten remained three points clear at the top. This weekend, we hit the ice as the Basingstoke Bisons and the Sheffield Steel Dogs clashed in what was a feisty encounter. Michael Connolly was at the Planet Ice Arena. The Basingstoke Bisons have had a mixed start to the season, recording one win and one loss in their opening two fixtures, but they'll look to put the disappointment of last week's defeat behind them as they play host to current league leaders, the Sheffield Steel Dogs. And it was their number seven, Andre Payet, who opened the scoring for Sheffield seven minutes into the quarter. But midway through the second quarter, Bison's player coach Steve Moria levelled the game. Soon after, Marcel Petran put the Bisons ahead for the first time in the game. But the Steel Dogs bit back, scoring less than one minute later. With the game tight, Tempest fled, but it was Basingstoke who grabbed the winning goal. After some skillful play to beat the Steel Dogs in their own defensive zone, Miller squeezed in this effort. But the excitement wasn't over. As the game drew to an end, Wiggins and Payette traded blows on the ice. I'll leave it to you to judge who won this brawl. But one thing is for certain though, it was the Basingstoke Bisons who hung on to claim a 3-2 victory over the tabletoppers.
Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. That's all the sport for this week. Back to you, Hannah. Thanks, Sam. The struggles of those moving away from home for the first time are numerous. For one fresher at this university, the main obstacle is in the kitchen. Julie Cordier brings home the bacon. Bacon, one of many British classics and a student's favourite. But who knew that cooking bacon was such a fine skill? I met Winchester fresher Catriona, who runs a good chance to be awarded the title DAF Student of the Year. I never like actually cook myself. I love food, but uh, no. But I had a friend round today and I had bacon and I was like, I'll make bacon for everyone. Um, and then realised we don't have a grill. So I thought, oh, I can't make it, sorry guys. And they were like, well, you can fry it. And I was like, how can you fry bacon? I did joke that I'd go look it up on Google because I Google everything. And when she decided to cook bacon for the first time, she made a real pig's ear of it. So I ran into my room and got my pan out of my plastic because I hadn't actually used any of my pans yet. <laughs> like ran in, started making it and then the pan was cold as well because I forgot to like turn it on. Well and now you can cook bacon so... I can. It's, it's another step. I've made pasta, bacon, I made chicken curry like once and um, I think that's about it. I, can't, I haven't ever attempted anything else. Although she's certainly not Gordon Ramsay, Katriona is confident that her cooking skills will soon improve. This is Julie Cordier for Winchester News Online. And finally, a local star returns to Hampshire to get involved in a charity event at a Winchester City football club. Um, yeah, that was a, a pretty special moment. Uh, to be honest, there was, um, I think the time that I did it, there was probably only about nine... Uh, eight or nine players that had got to 100 goals uh, and they were all, all set to forwards of, uh, of some uh, considerable um, names and, and records down the year. So it was lovely to be able to join that, that little elite club, really. Of course, for the full interview and for more award-winning news and sport, make sure you go to www.winol.co.uk. But that's all for this week. Goodbye. <laughs>